Yo, what's good everybody? Welcome back to a new series, the Los Angeles Lakers My NBA series. The last my series or my NBA series we did was the Chicago Bulls. We went four seasons, I believe. We won a championship. The last year was a bit different. Um, I'm not gonna spoil it. I feel like it was really good to watch. And I had a ton of fun making it, and it was by far the most success I've had doing like a YouTube series. Um, so thank you for that. But this is a brand new series, a brand new team, and a lot um, of new stuff that we're going to be looking at. So the reason why I chose Los Angeles Lakers is I grew up a Kobe fan. So by default, I was a Lakers fan. And um, I will say the past few years, my, my fandom hasn't been amazing. I'd, I don't know why. For some reason, I don't like LeBron that much. And it's like the, the ton of the media coverage the Lakers get, like... Some of it annoys me, but it's whatever. I I'm still a Lakers fan. Um, so, yeah. That's why I chose the Lakers, and I thought it'd be very fun to do it this this time. Um, and just like last last year when I did the uh, Las Vegas... Uh, what, what were we? Las Vegas Venom. Um, I did a fictional first overall pick in the draft just to make it more interesting. And, like, we need the first pick to go to the Lakers. So, um, we don't need it, but, like... And I didn't, I didn't force any of these trades, but you're about to see um, what happens. So we let LeBron walk. Um, that's pretty obvious. You'll see where he goes in just a second um, after I tell you the roster and the, the moves we made, the trades we have. Um, I basically just restarted the franchise and got rid of, rid of almost everybody. Um, so before we start, let's hop into the dra or the uh, trade that we made um, for Anthony Davis. Um, we had to get rid of Anthony Davis because I feel like that's just starting off new. We can get some young players, get some assets, and just start the franchise off in the right direction. So the first trade um, we did, and really the only trade I'm going to show you that's significant, um, we receive Bilal Koulibaly from the Wizards, Marcus Sasser and Quentin Grimes from the Pistons, the 2024 second overall pick um, from the Wizards, and that's what we receive. I think that's a nice haul. I'll talk about it in just a second. Um, the Wizards get... Rui Hachimura, Jared Vanderbilt, Gabe Vincent, Jalen Hood, Shafino, Maxwell Lewis, a 2027 unprotected first round pick from Detroit, and I believe four second round picks from both sides. And then the Pistons get Anthony Davis. And you'll see in just a second, they actually capitalized on getting Anthony Davis. The reason why I made this trade, um, we get Bilal Koulibaly, who is uh, a guy who has tremendous upside as a defender. Um, you can already see it in his rookie year. Um, his three ball will fall up too. He's got a good jumper. Uh, Marcus Sasser, just a cool guy off the bench to score, you know, fill it up like a, at his best, he'd be like a Lou Williams type of guy. Quentin Grimes, 3 and D, um, you always like to have guys like that. Um, and we got the second overall pick in the draft, um, which we then traded for the first pick in the draft with like five second round of picks attached to it, so that wasn't that bad. Um, and then for the Wizards, they eventually traded Rui Hachimura, I don't know what they're going to do with Jared Vanderbilt, um, I don't know what they're going to do with... Gabe Vincent and and J they'll probably keep Jalen Huchifino and Maxwell Lewis, but they get you know another first round pick and they get you know a bunch of second overall picks and just some pieces to help their squad out. They get a ton of players too, like a ton. Um, I think they also have like the sixth pick in the draft too, if I'm not mistaken. So that's cool. So they still get somebody solid um, in their draft, and then the Pistons. Why not speed up this rebuild, man? It's taken too long. They just had a season where they set the record for the most consecutive losses. And you pair Cade Cunningham with Anthony Davis, Jaden Ivey, Jalen Duran, and you'll see who else they just got in a second. They also have a Star Thompson. Um, but yeah, that is how that is looking. And then, um, like how I just mentioned, we got the first overall pick in the draft. This might be going a little too fast, um, but I figured I could. Just, I would just get it off. Um, so we get to the gameplay next episode, which I'm probably going to record after this. Um, but the number one pick in the draft, I told you it was going to be a fictional player, but I also put him in the 2024 class because, man, this class is not that great. It's kind of weak. Um, but with the first pick in the draft, we took Vander Williamson from McNeese State University. Um, McNeese, small school, but they had a good year in real life, so I figured... Why not just put him on McNeese? He averaged 27.4 points per game, 6.4 rebounds, 6.2 assists. He's a 6'5 combo guard. Um, 
He's got a nice wingspan as well. I think seven foot. Shot 47.9% from the field, 41.1% from deep, and 97.6% from the free throw line. He missed, I believe, his first three free throws and then went perfect from then on. It's like unheard of how good he was as a free throw shooter, which is just weird. Like you don't you know, usually see that on a top, a top guy who's just like an elite free throw shooter out the gate. Like he might be the best free throw shooter in the NBA already. Um, he had an insane college season. He was the number one crew, uh, recruit. Uh, coming out of high school, and he chose to um, go to McNeese, and you'll see that at the end. Um, but he led McNeese State men's basketball to a 31-3 record and entered the NCAA tournament as a 10th seed. He had a 26-point triple-double in the Elite Eight, which was a surprise that they made it that far. Anyways, um, an upset number two Duke to advance to the Final Four. He then... Dropped 45 points with 8 assists to advance to the national championship over number 4 Houston. So, talk about a Cinderella run that he might actually go all the way with. Um, that's what he was doing. And then in the national championship game, he capped off probably the greatest men's basketball season that we've seen in a while. Uh, individually, at least. With 32 points, 14 rebounds, 6 assists, and 5 blocks. And won a national championship with McNeese. Like, a very small school. Um, in terms of every other school that's out there. Uh, he chose McNeese over Duke in his final decision to attend school because McNeese ran an NBA-style offense, and Williamson wanted to showcase his skills to ensure that he was a top draft pick. Uh, McNeese, you know, pick and roll heavy, uh, make reads out of the pick and roll, um, run floppy sets. Like, this was a really good school for him to choose, and, um, you know, good for him to choose it. Now he's the number one pick in the draft, so... He heads over to our squad, and then um, we'll take a look at the rest of the draft order. I don't remember if I have it. I don't think I do, um, so I'm not going to show you that. So we're just going to get into the player profiles for our squad. Um, well, actually, I'm going to show you the roster first, and then we'll get to the player profiles. We're only doing the top six players because I didn't feel like doing them for every single player that we have in our squad. Um, so here is... Our 2024-2025 roster. Um, the starting lineup will be Vander Williamson, Austin Reeves, Bilal Koulibaly. Uh, we signed Najee Marshall, and we also signed James Wiseman. Um, James Wiseman just has a little bit of upside, I guess, at this point in his career. He's kind of just there. Um, but maybe we can help him become something better. Uh, I don't know why I'm yawning. Um, but hopefully, you know, he can become something Better than what he's been his whole career, which is just basically nothing. Um, off the bench, we're going to have Marcus Sasser, Quentin Grimes, Torian Prince, who we re-signed. Um, I like him uh, as a shooter for us and a defensive player as well. And then at power forward, we signed KJ Martin or Kenyon Martin Jr. And then Xavier Tillman for some defensive versatility. Then our... Um, our reserves, like our guys that might not play, they might play. We signed Cam Reddish. Um, we signed K Greg Brown, who was originally Harry Giles that was going to be there. Um, but Greg Brown was super impressive in the summer league, which I did play all those games. Um, he was he was a nice pairing with Vander Williamson, who likes to throw those alley oops. So you can even see like Kenyon Martin might sneak into the starting lineup just for those type of plays. Uh, but Greg Brown, look for him to get some more minutes. As the season progresses, then we re-signed Kendrick Nunn. Um, he just spent a year in like Olympicos, Olympicanos, something like that, um, over in Greece, and he was he was hooping. I've always liked Kendrick Nunn. Um, I didn't I wasn't aware he's 29 years old now, um, or he might be 28 in real life, but in this universe he's now 29. Um, but you know, if somebody gets hurt, he's always a solid backup guard. He can score and he can distribute a little bit. And then we have Colin Murray. Um, What's his other? What's his other? Boyles, I think. Colin Murray Boyles. Yeah, Colin Murray Boyles from South Carolina. He's like a six-eight wing. He can defend a little bit on the perimeter and inside. He's athletic. It's about all you get with him. Um, you know, there's there's obviously some potential for him to become something different. Um, but he's just an athletic guy who you just take a swing on, see if he, you know, progresses at all. So yeah, that is the roster. Let's get into the player profiles for this squad. And first off, we are going to start with our number one pick in the draft, Vander Williamson. 
Um, in the summer league, he averaged 20.2 points per game, 4.5 um, rebounds per game. Excuse why it says points per game. Uh, rebounds per game, 6.8 assists per game, 1.6 steals per game, 1.1 blocks per game, 2.8 turnovers per game. His efficiency went down. That's kind of to be expected with a rookie point guard, even though he was amazing um, in college with his efficiency. 43.6% shooting from the field, 25.6% uh, from deep, which will definitely go up as the season does. And he shot 100% from the free throw line. Um, you know, he's six foot five with a seven foot wingspan. He's obviously going to play some elite defense year one. He could be in combos for that all defensive team. Um, just depends on the effort level he gives us. But you can tell he's a great scorer and a great passer. Um, and he's just going to get the job done. He's very athletic. Some scouts compared him to like a poor man's Luka Doncic, but like with athleticism, which is not a bad player at all. Um, but he's really good. He's kind of like a Penny Hardaway type of guy, too. Like tall, athletic. But a great passer, um, obviously a better shooter, but it's a different era. Um, but look for him to carry on the, you know, the Lakers torch. You know, we went from, you know, George Mikan, to Kareem, to Magic, uh, all these guys, you know, Kobe, uh, LeBron. I mean, Shaq was in there as well. Uh, but we could see him carry the torch to be one of the Lakers greats. So that's exciting to see. He, he's like Lonzo Ball coming out of college, if you think like that. He was just better. Um, then we go to Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves last year um, had a pretty solid year. I honestly thought he was playing better than his stats indicate, but still having a good year. 15.9 um, points per game, 4.3 rebounds, 5.5 assists, uh, 0.8 steals, 0.3 blocks, 2.1 turnovers per game, 36% uh, from three, 48% from the field, and 85% from the line. Uh, his role here is just to be the secondary ball handler um, and give us scoring when he needs to. Maybe run that second lineup with Marcus Sasser and stuff like that. Um, just improve defensively and knock down his three ball. I thought he I thought he had a way higher three ball than what 2K is giving him. He's got an 81. Austin Reeves can shoot. Um, that's, that's not a concern for me, though. So, yeah, I'm just excited to have him on the team. He is 26, which is like fairly old for our team our team is really young i think he's like the second oldest player on our team or third let me see yeah he's the third oldest player on our team tied with Najee marshall it's pretty insane um but yeah i like austin reeves he's cool he's, he's calmed on that flopping so i like him even more now and then our next guy is balal kula bali last year in washington he averaged 8.4 points per game, 4.1 rebounds, 1.7 assists, almost a steal, almost a block, and a turnover and a half per game. Shot 34% from deep, um, which you like to see that go up to 38, maybe even 40 this year if he really wants to take a leap. Um, he progressed pretty well in the player progression uh, stage, so that's nice to see. I'm excited for him to just turn into a great defender and somebody who's gonna knock down the three ball. I don't know if he will ever develop like on ball creation skills or anything like that, creating self creation, who knows. Um, but you know, he could be a good cutter, hit his open threes and play elite defense. And that's like an, all I could ask for him. He could be like an OG Ananobi type of guy. And um, I'm excited to have him. You know, he's very young and he's got incredible, an incredible wingspan. He's got great length and he defends really well. Former uh, teammate of Victor Wimbanyama, by the way. Next, we have Marcus Sasser. Marcus Sasser in Detroit last year uh, was one of those bright spots in what was a terrible season for them. Averaged eight points per game, three rebound, or three assists, about two rebounds, turnover and a half per game. Shot 37% from deep, which is not bad for rookie guard at all. He was having some games where he was lighting it up from outside, so... I'm excited to have him here, too. Um, excuse that it says small forward. He is a point guard. Uh, but he's going to be cool off the bench, um, and he shoots the free throws pretty well. So, you know, I'm excited to have him on the squad. Just somebody to give us some scoring um, when Vander Williamson heads to the bench and Austin Reeves as well. Next, we have James Wiseman. Like I said, he has not really been much of anything so far throughout his career, ignore that assess shooting guard. He's a center. Um, seven points per game, five rebounds, an assist, half a block, a turnover. Didn't hit a three last year, but he shot 60% from the field, which is, it's something. 
Um, he can shoot the three ball a little bit. He has a 67 three ball, so it's not like he's going to be chucking them up or anything. Um, but it's just a it's a, it's a low risk, high reward type of signing for us. I think we got him on a, a one year deal. Yeah, we have him on a one a one year deal worth 20 million um, with a team option. So if he impresses this year, we'll obviously pick it up. Um, but he's somebody who can just be a lob threat and knock down the corner three when he needs to and protect the rim a little bit. He's st still fairly ath athletic. Um, he's only 23 year old. Through t Damn, I can't speak. He's only 23 years old as well. So I'm excited to see that. And hopefully he can shoot, you know, above 33 to 34% from three. And that'd be a successful season for James Wiseman. And our last guy is Quentin Grimes. And I also spelled his name wrong. But I got the shooting guard and everything right in the rebounds. So, 7 points per game, 2 rebounds, 1.3 assists, almost a steal, no blocks, um, half a turnover. Shot 34% from the 3 and 37% from the field. It was a down year for Quentin Grimes. Um, the year the year before and even his rookie year. Hmm. Man, I don't know why I'm yawning. He shot almost 40% from three. Uh, shot 38.6% from three in 2023. And in 2022, shot 38.1. And then he just kind of got phased out of the lineup. It was really weird to see. Um, then the Knicks just traded him to the Pistons for Bogdanovich and Alec Burks. And now here he is. He is a Los Angeles Laker. He is somebody who can... These type of guys can swing games, right? You know, you have the superstar guys who can win you games. These guys can help you swing them. Um, if he knocks down his open threes, if he defends at a high level, um, you know, get some timely stops here and there. This is somebody you would love to have on any squad, you know. Maybe Austin Reeves is struggling defensively in the last minute or two. Boom, we throw in Quentin Grimes. He can still knock in the three ball. You know, they have the same three-point rating somehow. Um, but Quentin Grimes is a guy who can light it up too sometimes, you know. If he gets those catch and shoot opportunities, he can absolutely catch fire from outside. Yeah, that's the player profiles for our squad. Um, let me show you the roster now. Um, on 2K, this is what we have right here. Obviously, we got Torian Prince, Najee Marshall, Kenyon Martin, and then all the rest of the guys. Um, this is how their overalls are looking. Like I said, this is a fairly young team, 19-year-olds, three 23-year-olds. We have one guy who is 30 years or older, and that's Torian Prince. And then 29, Kendrick Nunn. 26 Najee Marshall. I mean, this is this is a young team, um, but a good team. And then um, our first game of the year will be against the Sacramento Kings. And I'm gonna show you. Um, oh wait, no, I won't show you. Uh, that's for next episode. Whatever, ignore that. So let's show you what happened around the league. Starting with something um, fairly insane. Um, you're about to see it right now. 76ers. They picked up LeBron James. They re-signed Ty Tyrese Maxey, uh, signed Obi Toppin, signed Dario Sarge back, Royce O'Neal. They drafted Jared McCain, who I really like. Um, off their team, 19th overall, Gordon Hayward. Uh, they signed Ryan Dunn to a contract. Did they draft him? They must have drafted him, 13th. Okay. Um, Ty Ty Washington, KJ Simpson, they also drafted from Colorado. But the reason why LeBron went here... Um, it was kind of perfect, too. Bronny James got drafted here in the second round. And it was kind of projected that he was just going to go undrafted and go to school. And the Sixers said, well, he's in the draft. Why don't we have money this year. Why not just take him and say, LeBron, come over here? So they did. Um, Bronny's not a high overall, though. He's probably not going to play at all for this team. But it'd just be cool to have the same, you know, same guys on the same team. First father-son duo in NBA history on the same team. Or just in the league at all. I think. I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, the Bucks didn't do much. Signed Emmanuel quickly. Monte Morris. And yeah. That's about it. Kai Jones as well. Kai Jones is a guy we can also sign. I had him in the Las Vegas Venom. Um, Las Vegas Venom. Uh, my NBA series. But he's somebody we can sign. Uh, just to be a lob threat. Uh, he's very cool. Then the Bulls um, didn't do much besides sign Miles Bridges and draft Jacoby Walter. Pretty uh, bad team. And look at the Cavs. They're kind of missing somebody. They're kind of missing somebody. But you can infer 
on uh, where that missing guy went uh, based off some of these players. Um, you'll see in just a second. Celtics, pretty solid team, man. Pretty solid team. Signed Isaiah Hartenstein. So they got even better this year, which is stupid. Uh, Clippers lost James Harden. Uh, you'll see where he went in just a second and then just filled out the rest of the depth with the Bull Bull and Andre Drummond. And uh, then the Grizzlies, they got a lot better this year. Uh, they get back John Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr., uh, Desmond Bain there, Marcus Smart, Gigi Jackson, second year, developing pretty nicely. He's got a nice three ball. Still doesn't have a face scan. Um, they have Vince Williams, who's somebody I would be intrigued in picking up, but I think Bilal Koulibaly does the same thing, and so does Quentin Grimes, but he's a cool guy. And then they drafted Donovan Klingon, number four overall, which is what was a bit of, a bit of a surprise. God damn, I can't speak. A bit of a surprise, but also a, a tremendous fit for this team who needed a center like him to protect the paint next to Jaron Jackson Jr., who's a terrible rebound. <laughs> he played center last year and averaged five rebounds. Like, that's just atrocious. Um, then they kept the rest of their team together. Then the Hawks. <sighs> they're already on of the video. Um, Trey Young, DeJounte Murray. Um, it's been rumored that they're going to trade either one this offseason. So I think in during this season, they're gonna probably looking to trade DeJounte Murray. Because I'm not going to trade Trey Young from them. It's just too good. And that's about all they did with this team. They, they drafted Matas Pazulis. Um, cool. <laughs> Really cool. Um, he did nothing. Except draft Reed Shepard, like, 20th overall. 15th. That's really good, in my opinion. It's great value for Reed Shepard. I'm surprised he fell that much. So, they have a nice pickup there. They also have Alondis Williams on the roster now. Then the Hornets. Um, they were also trying to trade for Anthony Davis. They just didn't have a high enough pick for us. Um, they got Roy Hachimura. Um... They drafted Ron Holland 6th overall. I feel like that's a pretty good fit for them. And they're just looking to run it back. Brandon Miller progressing another year. Hopefully a, a healthy season for LaMelo Ball. Next, Jazz signed DeMar DeRozan and uh, Grayson Allen, who just re-signed with the Suns in real life, so I think I might put him back on the Suns. He just signed a contract today. I think it was like four years, 70 million. Cool for him. They drafted Nikola Topic. This is a solid squad. Devin Carter as well. Like, this is a solid squad. Um, Kings drafted Stefan Castle, which was a big need for them defense. Um, he's a great defensive guard. He's tall. He's just won a national championship with UConn. He's going to be pretty good for them. Um, the Knicks replaced uh, OG and Anobi with Isaac Okoro, who does like the same thing, just not as good. Um, they look solid. And then that's our team. Magic didn't do much besides sign Gary Trent Jr. And they actually made a great draft pick in Tyler Kolick. I like Tyler Kolick a lot. Um, he's a great passer. That's somebody they need. Um, the Mavericks didn't do anything besides draft Dalton Connect, which is solid. I like that. You had another shooter. Nets, I have no idea what the fuck they're doing, man. I might just have to put that band hammer on them. Just trade everybody away from them, man. Like, Macau and Claxton need to go. Cam probably needs to go. <laughs> he signed Jonas Valanciunas. Like this team, this team, like literally all these players on the roster, teams would love to have. Like, they would love to have these guys. But all you put them all together, they're terrible. They're terrible together. The Nuggets um, didn't do anything, but they did draft Bobby Clinton, who I like, and then they also drafted AJ Johnson, who's got high upside. And then the Pacers, they signed Patrick Williams. Nice signing. And that's, they re-signed Buddy, or they signed Buddy Hill again. And Josh Primo, too, I guess. Um, Pelicans <clears throat> drafted uh, Kyle Filipowski. It's nice because they needed a center. And then they also got Tyler Smith, who can develop very nicely for them. Then the Pistons, man, what an offseason for them. Anthony Davis, Cade Cunningham, James Harden, Jalen Duran, Jaden Ivey, Asar Thompson. They re-signed Simone Fontecchio. They signed Bruce Brown. They drafted Cody Williams. This team is solid, man. This team can make, uh, obviously, I think they're going to make the playoffs. But this team can low-key make some noise once they get to the playoffs. They're inexperienced, but they do have a few guys, Anthony Davis and James Harden. 
who have been um, in the playoffs before, even though Harden's not amazing, but AD certainly is. The Raptors didn't do much of anything. They signed Taylor Horton Tucker, and uh, yeah, that's about it. I think Scottie Pippen Jr. too. It's cool to see. Rockets got better, of course. They always get better in 2K. Um, they signed D'Angelo Russell. <clears throat> they drafted Zachary Richasar. I don't know how to fucking say his name. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Torn right MCL for Jabari Smith. Steven Adams. I think Steven Adams is actually in. And then Adama Ball. Wow. Serious injuries for them. But they're still solid even with those injuries. Um, yep. Yeah. Spurs got Donovan Mitchell. They traded him for, I think, Keldon Johnson, Zach Collins, Malachi Branham, and a lot of picks. A lot of picks. But you kind of figured that was going to happen. He's going to get traded at some point, and Spurs figured, hey, Victor's not going to get any younger. And yeah, he's only 20, but, like, when you have a player like this, you need to capitalize right away, and that's what they're trying to do here. Devin Vassell, another year developing. Uh, Trey Jones, another year. Jeremy Sohan, they drafted Rob Dillingham, seventh overall. This is a solid squad, man. They can make a playoff push, um, especially with Wemby and Donovan Mitchell. Just those two are probably going to be very, very fun to watch. And then Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, Nurkic, Markel Fultz. And, man, they drafted Johnny Furphy from Kansas. And other than that, man, this team is just... It's looking rough outside of those top three. Maybe even Nurkic, top four. Um, then the Thunder side, OG and Anobi. Um, and they just get another year developing. I don't know if they drafted anybody. I don't think they did. Um, but this is a really good team. And, yeah, this is an elite team. Jalen Williams, another year developing. He had a really great season last year. Like, a really great season. I, I didn't know he was 23 already, but who cares? Then the Timberwolves, um, basically did nothing. Mason Plumley and Killian Hayes. Not great. Blazers, um, they get Alexander Sar to run their four. They had the first pick in the, or the second pick in the draft. Um, another year developing for Scoot Henderson, who had an up and down, very down uh, rookie season. Warriors, Ooh. they didn't do anything. Oh, they picked up. Oh no, this is the same fucking team they had last year, except for Quentin. Oh no. Oh, Tristan Newton, they drafted. I mean, okay, man. Like, <laughs> Okay, maybe Kaminga develops into a second star and they can try to contend. I just don't think it's there anymore for the the Warriors. Wizards, um, like I said, they uh, traded with us. They have Kuzma, who they're probably going to ship. Denny Avdia, very nice player. Had a great season last year. Um, yeah, wow, he had a really good season. Corey Kispert had a good season last year as well. They have Jared Vanderbilt. They're probably going to trade. Um, Jordan Poole, who is uh, looking to have a, bu a bu uh, bounce back year. He wasn't too great um, in Washington, but he did, uh, he did have flashes of being his, his old self. Uh, Martin Bagley has been good for them. Gabe Vincent, they're probably going to uh, trade. And Eves Missy, I think that's what his actual name is. They got him eighth overall, so hopefully he's cool for them. But this guy, these guys are just rebuilding. It wasn't a great draft anyways. Um... They get Jalen Huchifino, who's interesting, who I actually kind of wanted to keep, but we'll see what he does. Um, I like, I really liked him out at Indiana last year. And yeah, that is the whole NBA and what every moves, all the moves the team has made. And just the start of this franchise, um, our first game of the season will be against the Sacramento Kings. Um, I don't know when you'll see that, probably a few days after this one releases. But uh, thank you for the support in the last series, and hopefully you support me on this one. I'm um, trying to get, just uh, run up some subscriber numbers, and I don't know, just have fun making these videos, which I always do. Oh, so yeah. Um, I'll see you guys next time, and I hope you enjoyed. Peace.